Hey everybody, Phil Smy reviewing Ty Lopez's Business Accelerator program. This is step number three. This one's all about strategy. And we're gonna take those four things that we just talked about in step number two and break them down into eight. It's just like cellular dividing here. So, you know, we talked about the four and uh, and immediately Ty goes off on a tangent. It kind of bothers me he does all this. You know, he says, okay, we're going to talk about the four into eight, and then immediately goes off on some tangent about strategy versus tactics. You know, tactics is where that story where you're dropped in the jungle and a bunch of guys sharpen up their machetes and start chopping through the jungle to, uh, to get to freedom. And strategy is where you climb the tree and you look, oh, we need to go over there. So you need to have a combination of strategy and tactics and you can't have one without the other and one is not more important than the other. They're both very important. But so this course, Ty says, is a combination of strategy and tactics. And this one is supposedly about strategy. And uh, so the four now back to the actual content which was uh, the four things that we talked about last time. And that's the, the four P's and that's uh, product, price or finances, promotion and placement or distribution. And we're going to split those down into eight. And Peter Drucker actually had these eight as his eight tenants of a, of a business really. And that was marketing, which you can say is promotion. So innovation, which is the product. And then we go into things like human resources, financial resources, physical resources, productivity objectives, social responsibility objectives, and profit requirement objectives. So you can see there's actually kind of four because you have marketing, innovation, resources, and objectives. But anyway, that's not Ty's message. That's just my message. So one and two are kind of the marketing and innovation. People kind of get their head around that. You know, you have something and you need to tell people about it. But these other ones, uh, we break down a little bit in, in the program, uh, or Ty does, and I pair it. So first one, human resources. Now he's not talking about the HR department in your company. And he's talking about hiring people. How do you get people into your company? And um, you know, I'm doing this right now for one of my businesses. And hiring is a really tricky thing. You know, really the success and the growth of your company depends on your ability to attract the right people to come into your company. And uh, Munger. If you're playing the, the drinking game, Munger talks about this, you know, uh, the need to get those people in there and it's something that he's always underestimated. And you can't do a business by yourself, basically. You know, you have to sleep sometimes, you need a break, you might get sick, you want to go on vacation. Uh, you know, that's why the businesses that really generate the revenue understand how to use people inside to push that company upward. So number two was financial resources. Here's the Charlie Munger quote. Here we go. All my life I've underestimated the power of incentives. And incentives don't have to be money. Quite often they are. And uh, you know, manage, raise, and attract capital because money helps you grow. That's one of the key parts about financial resources. You have to understand how to raise money, how to raise money, <laughs> raid money, uh, financing, you know, franchising, like Ray Kroc came up with this idea. These are all ways to get money into your company because money will help you expand by helping you get people and doing other things. The next one was physical resources and physical resources don't talk a lot about at this stage and that a physical resource is like land you know if you're a farmer you need land that's a physical resource 
You may need a building or an office space or hardware or inventory. These are all things that your company needs to succeed. That's what's meant by physical resources. So what I'm talking about here is that you have to understand these eight things, you know, and you have to understand them and how they can help your business grow. Then we get into the objectives, productivity, uh, productivity objectives. You know, uh, you want to get the most out of these human resources or physical resources or financial resources. You have to be productive. You don't want to spend all day doing things that only move your company forward a little bit, if at all. And uh, Ty talks about James Franco. Now, I'm convinced that James Franco is not human because if you look at his Wikipedia page, what he does in a year is just kind of inhuman. You know, uh, he, you know, he started an acting school. He made films, directed films, produced films. Uh, you know, does charity work. He does all of these things. He's an incredibly productive person. And, you know, you just try to focus your time. And that's, I think, one of the downsides to go off on my personal tangent a little bit. If you're an entrepreneur, you know, um, that you really have to commit yourself to your productivity. And so, you know, maybe you think, oh, I can, I'm an entrepreneur, I can work at home and, you know, and I don't, I can watch TV if I want and blah, blah, blah. And that's technically true, but you have to always be thinking, am I being productive? Because until you're at that stage of the pyramid, you know, that, you know, financial success, um, even if that's not necessarily what you're going for, we all have to eat, we all have to pay the rent. And, and so you have to be productive and about being an entrepreneur, it's down to you, you know, you're the boss. So there's no one else there setting the goals. And that's why these productivity objectives are so important. Uh, social objectives, you know, now in our time, you can't hide, you know, if you pollute the environment, that's an extreme example, pollute the environment or, you know, you know, rip off old people or do these things like this, you will be found out and you will be spread all over the internet. But that's not why you shouldn't do it. You should, you know, you shouldn't do those things because they're the wrong things to do and they don't help society in general. And this idea of a Pareto efficiency, you know, we have a, a win-lose situation. Let's say you open a fast food restaurant, maybe you'll make lots of money, but let's face it, you're not doing anybody any favors by opening a fast food restaurant. Yeah, this neutral thing, you know, where, you know, okay, you're not doing any harm, you're not doing anybody any good, people aren't getting anything so great, but they're not getting anything so harmful. That's all right, but the thing you want to go for is the win-win. And Ty's favorite example of this, of course, is Tom's shoes, where, you know, you bought a pair of shoes and he donated a pair of shoes. But it doesn't have to be as extreme as that. It doesn't, you know, social responsibility is not about charity, is not about, you know, funding schools in Malawi or wherever. Um, that's nice and great if you do that, but that's not necessarily what social responsibility is about. Social responsibility can be, you know, um, not ripping people off. And social responsibility can be helping people to the best of your ability inside of your you know, niche that you're working on. There's a lot of definitions of social responsibility, but you have to have those objectives. And not just because of social media, but because you're a human being living in the 21st century. And it's about time that we thought about each other, as well as our pocketbooks. And then the last one was the profit requirement objective. And, you know, maybe that's not the reason you got into business you know, to make a lot of money, but you have to make money to grow the business. So you have to understand what makes you profitable and don't do things that lose money. You know, uh, you know, that's, what was it? That's one of Buffett's things is, you know, what's the first rule of business? Don't lose money. And any business, that's the way it is. I was going to say the Vatican, but that's a probably extreme example. So of, of making money. But, you know, you have to make money no matter what business you're in. You can't run at a loss. 
So those are the eight things. You have to know all of these things. And, and one thing Ty says in this, and it's one of the times when I wished he'd go off on a tangent and didn't go off on a tangent, he says, oh, you know, create a strategy manual with these eight chapters. And that's a brilliant idea. It's kind of like a, a business plan. Uh, there's many kind of forms as a business plan. You know, if you go and look at one of my other courses where I talk about using the business model canvas, um, that kind of thing, you really have to understand all the facets of your business. You're an entrepreneur. You just can't sit on the couch and think you're going to come up with the next iPhone and that's it. You have to understand how business works. And that's what the Business Accelerator program is about. That's what these videos are about. I'm here to chime in with my own personal experience as well. So know those eight things. Marketing, innovation, human resources, financial resources, physical resources, productivity objectives, social responsibility objectives, and profit requirement objectives. Understand those as how they do, how they relate to your business. Okay, questions. So which, these questions are just like the last one. Anyway, what of these eight things are you most naturally skilled at? Everybody says marketing and innovation. Which ones are you weakest at? And uh, people normally say physical resources, and that's my experience, and sadly productivity objectives people are not so good at. And how are you gonna bring these eight up to competency? Ty recommends reading books. Um, you know, reading books and listening to people who've done it works to a certain extent, but I think one of the most important things is just to be able to be self-reflective, to look at what you're doing and say, is this working? What areas am I failing in? You have to know that before you can go out and read the books and also take everything with a grain of salt. So that's it for step number three, strategy. We'll see you soon for step number four. I'm Phil Smy, thanks for watching.